Sudden, violent. Watch as a flight attendant smashes into the cabin ceiling on a flight to Switzerland. Screaming, crying, praying. Passengers on a flight in Colombia were terrified after the airplane hit severe turbulence, injuring some and forcing the flight crew to divert to another airport. This flight from Mallorca, Spain, hit thunderstorm spawn turbulence, violently shaking the aircraft. A flight heading to Singapore diverted to Bangkok. Dozens of passengers injured and one man died of an apparent heart attack. This is Hawaii. Wheelchairs and stretchers carried the injured off the plane. Instances of this kind of severe turbulence are rare, but will that still be the case in the future? Scientific research and anecdotal evidence suggest that climate change, the warming of the planet, could lead to an increase in bumpy roller coaster moments on flights. I'm sure not what any of us want to hear. Well, it's not going to depict on your weather radar the way you might expect. So if you're flying in the clouds, you're in a layer and you can't see it, all of a sudden you're flying along and you're slammed right into it and that's not what you want. Shem Malmquist, a Boeing 777 captain, also teaches at Florida Institute of Technology, College of Aeronautics. A little bit of weather here, maybe if you were back over here, you might even consider going around it on this side. As a pilot who has flown the globe, he believes some areas are becoming more volatile. The turbulence that we've experienced, well actually the kind of thunderstorms that we've been talking about have historically been constrained to tropical regions. And they are something that occurs when you have warmer oceanic areas. Over the last several years, in fact, noticeably in the last 10 or 15 years, these types of storms that are difficult to detect on aircraft weather radar using the conventional or what's usually trained techniques are now being found over much broader regions. We're at 20,000 feet. I know what you're thinking. Why are they harder to detect? Hold that thought. We'll circle back to that in a bit. It's important to know there are three basic causes of turbulence. Winds bumping up against a mountain range and riding up and over is called mountain wave turbulence. Convective turbulence is caused by thunderstorms. And then there's this, a pretty day cruising above a layer of puffy white clouds. Looks okay, right? Until this. This might have been clear air turbulence caused by jet streams, fast moving winds that circle the globe higher up in the atmosphere. Climate change has affected the kind of weather we're seeing. As it, the Earth is getting warmer, the speed of the jet streams increases, which increases the, the higher winds. You have stronger effects from flying over or in the vicinity of mountain ranges. Jet streams are stronger, and then we're, it also results in more moisture in the air. More water makes thunderstorms easier to form. So one of the other weather research Mike Split teaches aviation meteorology at Florida Tech. Split says research supports the belief that the jet stream will increase in speed and strength. The problem, Split says, isn't the speed of the jet, it's the potential for dangerous wind shear. The jet stream speed can be important, but it's not just the speed of the jet stream. It's the changing winds that we get near the jet stream. So we might have winds changing horizontally or vertical near the jet stream, and it's those shears that are important for creating turbulence. And yes, with stronger jet streams, we might expect that there's more shear in the vicinity, but not necessarily. Wind shear is when the wind changes direction and or speed over a short distance. It can be sudden, requiring pilots to respond immediately. So, how will climate change, intensifying jet streams, and thunderstorms affect air travel? The models are showing uh, future changes in turbulence frequency 
uh, that's fine, but on a day-to-day -day weather, we pretty much know where these problem areas are. In terms of real time, it's not a matter of we're not gonna be able to identify it. Uh, we'll still be able to identify the regions, it's just that they may be happening more frequently. Overall, we're expecting planet-wide to have increases in turbulence from those three areas, but not everybody's gonna get increases. It, it depends on where you are globally. And all three causes of turbulence, mountain wave, jet streams, and convective weather will be impacted by climate change. The warming planet split says will mean more storms, but not necessarily everywhere. This is the first time I've ever flown with you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's kind of a different way of flying. It certainly is. So. Dan Petrovich, a retired United Airlines captain, has flown airplanes for 47 years. We caught up with Dan at the Wayman College of Aeronautics in South Florida, and we went along for a ride with him in a simulator. Here we go. I haven't flown a simulator before, so this is a first for me. While Petrovich agrees climate change will have an effect on turbulence, the increasing number of reports of severe turbulence doesn't surprise him. More airplanes are, are, are in the air now, so you're getting more reports of turbulence. More and more aircraft are flying, more and more people are flying. If flight track was available 20 years ago and you looked at the crossings on the North Atlantic, you would have seen a few dozen airplanes. Now you see hundreds going to Europe. Now see how the airspeed's jumping around? Yep. That's indicating turbulence, the vertical speeds bouncing around. As the pilot, as the captain, what are you doing here? I'm watching my airspeed. Mm -hmm. because I don't want to stall, but I'm also watching my vertical speed and my altitude because I don't want to get pushed down into the ground, but I don't want to stall the aircraft either. And I don't want to overspeed the airplane. After 47 years flying, there isn't much Dan hasn't seen or experienced in the air. I've had times where we flew out of uh, Miami here and I'm going to uh, Santiago, Chile, or Buenos Aires. So you're flying right down the spine of the Andes. Well, the wind's coming off the Pacific Ocean, and it's hitting those mountains and rising up, and do 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 like this for eight hours. For eight hours? Yeah. Nothing you can and do, you can't about, do it. about it. No. Are you doing what you can to avoid turbulence? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ter people pay for a nice ride. Okay. I I I kind of joke about it in a way that the roof on my house, the food on my table, my kids' education, all the things we have was paid for by those people in the back. So I want them to have the best experience they can. And I also have this undying affection for one guy on the airplane, my wife's husband. <laughs> so I'm gonna take care of him. If I do, everyone else is fine. So let's circle back now to those hard to detect convective thunderstorms Captain Malmquist says are becoming more frequent. Classified as lazy thunderstorms, the water portion gets up to about 20,000 feet. Above that, it turns to frozen particles, which Malmquist says weather radar is not designed to pick up. If we're just using the weather radar, the storms appear benign or maybe don't even show up at all unless we start using some modified techniques to try to pick it up. And even then, it can be difficult and challenging. The the type of storm that we're talking about do not depict on the weather radar itself. And so in that case, unless we see some lightning which can kind of go through the clouds, it's very difficult to even know the storm is there. And consequently, our ability to provide some warning to cabin crew as well as passengers is really limited because we just can't see the weather until it's, we're right on it or even in it. At the Florida Tech College of Aeronautics, a considerable amount of time is spent teaching student pilots about the weather, what to look for, and how to handle it. This is Florida Tech Aviation at the Melbourne Airport. One of the most critical things student pilots have to learn here is how to deal with turbulence while they're flying. So we flew with a student pilot and an instructor to see and hear what's discussed. For Celise Ascaland in the left seat, this is her first time flying a twin engine plane. Today, Amael Copeland is the instructor. So as we're out here flying today, we can see that there's a lot of cumulus clouds out here. These are the, the big fluffy clouds that we can 
see. These clouds, although beautiful, do come with a lot of turbulence that we need to really be cautious of when we make the decision to go fly. Yeah, before we go fly, we want to make sure that we're aware of the different types of turbulence and the different intensities. Um, these intensities can be uh, shown through pilot reports who are actually flying and can let us know. When we do our training, we teach our students how to divert. Um, and put them in scenario-based training where we give them these situations where, you know, unforecast weather does occur, what are you going to do about it? And make sure that our students know the right course of action and how to stay safe. But you always want to be prepared for those scenarios and that's what we train for here as well, is to be uh, prepared to divert in any kind of situation, prepared to know what to do if we do get in a situation where, you know, the handling qualities of the aircraft, directional control might be a little bit hard to maintain. As we can see right now, we're on top of the cumulus layer, and it's not very turbulent up here, it's pretty smooth. It's important to note that airplane accidents attributed to turbulence are very rare. Subsequent investigations generally find pilot error. One thing experts wanted us to know is that airplanes are designed and built to handle even severe turbulence. Us, not so much we might get tossed around, but the planes can manage it. So what's the message to passengers when they start hearing all these stories, oh, turbulence is gonna get worse, what would you tell passengers? Don't worry about it, we got this. The training's there. We do everything we can to avoid it. Uh, the, the, the big thing is, leave your seatbelt on.